Good afternoon, and welcome to Tenant Spin and the Writing on the Wall Digital Day. In 2001, Tenant Spin was commissioned by BBC Radio 3 to produce the new 80 minute drama Superblock, set in the year 2040 when all the demolished Liverpool Tower blocks are rebuilt on top of each other. Today's presentation, Level 900, has been developed by five tenants Pauline Cox, James Dunn, Margot Hogg. Rita Robinson and Rick Ward, along with writer Joanne McAndrew. Level 900 explores the untold super block stories. It is set in the year 2040. After this 35 minute film, we'll be having a 10 minute break, which will be followed by a project called Up in the Air with the Young People's Project Interchill. This lift wasn't working. <laughs> oh God! What an horrendous day. Where's this wife? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to get everything ready for our Sue's party. I mean, don't bother doing anything special. She said. I'll just have a couple of mates over, get half a bottle of Bacardi and a packet of crisps. Next thing you know, sixty-five of her closest friends are turning up at half past seven. Well, I must ask Chris if she can fit me in this afternoon. Stay to me. Oh, God, where's this lift? Don't see living in the house. High rise in the world. And he can't sort the lift out. Come on. <sighs> well, I can't car sort the gate up the stairs. Bloody hell, not with my knees. I mean, that would be back. I mean, I'm 43 years of age and live on the 216th floor. I'll be 44 by the time I get there. Broke, isn't it? I'm walking on it. God, somebody shoot me. I don't know. I work all day, up and down that ward. Nurse, do this, nurse, do that. Fetch me, carry me. God. Can you pass me that commode? Will this ingrown toenail kill me? Tell you what, I'll freaking kill you if you put that stinking foot anywhere near me again. And what happens? You come home to this. I pay me council tax. I mean, all right, it's not much, but... Four million a year. I mean, bloody hell. You'd think they'd sort the leading lifts out, wouldn't you? Oh, God. Here's this. Fourth floor. Only another 212 to go. This is absolutely ridiculous. Not my chest. I'll have to sit down and get my breath back. Ooh, that's better. I wondered what was up. He didn't know whether or not to 
Pongamos la Instagram de Vanessa. Está en el padre. She wants to get that. She didn't want us to go into an album. I'm sure. She said the baby might end up like her. I know, you know. Lady Petra, father, she told me. It was pretty close. And that baby's very safe. She never went back to her old ways. She never wore the block again. She was a fantastic mother. I couldn't believe how she took the motherhood. Look how Trish turned out. A little treasure she is. And now everyone loves Trish. Is she like anybody? She feels like Please stay calm. Do not open the door. I hope it doesn't happen again. You know I'm moving up to the top, don't you? Yes, dear. I'm sorry if it was all sad when I managed to break up. I know you worked hard. I know you worked hard, but it's not everyone who wants to stay at home and be chill while they're out trying to work all around the world for three new bands. <laughs> well, I thought he was doing it all for me and the children. But for 23 years he lived in a haze of drink and drugs. And he thought sending money and presents made up for everything. He didn't pay that time. He had his heart attack and came home to be nursed and begin where he left off. But that's when I discovered that the hour I'd loved all those years had changed. I had nothing in common with a selfish dreamer. The kids had left home and I was used to a life on my own. But the super block is my life. As you know, I visit my mother in the nursing home, clinic on the lower floors, and I visit the activity floors on the top, where I go bungee jumping, skydiving and gym. I love it here. And now, because I've lived on the lower floor for years, I'm eligible to a higher floor. I am having a flat on the 1,456th floor. And when I went to see her, breathtaking, it was like something out of a all neat, smooth units, loads of space, no clutter. I love the sleek, minimalistic look. You'd have to come to my flat for me. I'll send you an invitation. I will. What made you decide to move here? You mean what made me see sense? It was a phone call from America. Al Politico had left a message for Al. His friend Ginger had vacated his house in America and wishes him well. What house? What friend? When I confronted him, he cried and confessed. Ginger was a she. And we'd lived together for 15 years. Oh, and he'd always loved me and the children. But I thought about all those years I'd called him when I was a kid. And we'd grown up without a dad and him. And we'd been betrayed. So I told him to go back to America. We'd both make a new start. I even packed his case. He left yesterday. I don't know if he'll want to keep in touch. You mean after what I've done? Why are you done? Well, I feel guilty now. I did something terrible. I ditched every buttonhole of my shirt and suit jacket. Carefully removed all the zips from his pants. Turned up all his trousers three inches. And cut the heels and toes out of his socks. Well, I think God has a sense of humour. <laughs> I don't know about how. Floor. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm going to sleep. I tell you what, my voice has gone all weird as well. It's weird. <laughs> Dehydration. I need water. 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 Oh, oh, I know. There you are. What I've got in this bag here, this shop. Well, Christ, you should have to adapt, don't you? Now let's have a look. What's this, a bottle of? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's better. Hey, can't hear those lifts. Where is everyone? I wouldn't even mind bumping into someone I ate. Kimmy! Oh, God, I suppose too big and soon there, doesn't it? Is that you, Lena, love? Oh, hello, Mary. Oh, what are you doing out here? Doesn't look like I'm having a picnic. Oh. Do you want some? I'm mm, drinking in the afternoon. Well, I shouldn't really, but go on then. <laughs> Get it down, yeah. Oh. Are you on the way up or down? I'm going home. I've got to get a registrar to party, haven't I? Oh, 
Oh, they're Pringles. Oh, I love them. Hey, do you remember when we were kids? We used to love them. Whenever we had a party, my mum would say, stick Kylie on and get the Pringles out. Hey, let's have a good time. Oh, cheese and chai flavour too. My favourite. All right, do you want one? Oh, go on then, if you're opening them. Subtle you, aren't you, there you go. Hey, I could give you an hand, you know, if you want. For a few flowers anyway. Oh, would you? Oh, thanks, mate. Hey, tell you what, that's all right, that, isn't it? Well, to be honest, I'm glad we're out of the house. It's my John's anniversary today. Oh, oh how long has it been, Mary? Eight years. Oh, a marvellous man he was, Lena, marvellous. Do you know, he rubbed my feet every night for 22 years, he did. Go away, a saint. And while we're walking, I'll tell you all about his kidney operation, shall I? Oh. What the surgeon said when they opened him up. Oh, God, I can't wait. Come on, Grace. Come on, then. Still not right. It's just not right. What are you going on about, girl? Well, you know what I mean, and it's not just the sex. Our lives are just so boring. They're so quiet. And what do you suggest, love? Well, why don't we give that personality clinic a go? Well, yeah. Let's have a personality swap. Hmm. Okay, honey. But you know the risks we're taking. Oh, the 
sessions continued, the more evident it became. Finally, during this session, both couples' personalities reverted back into their normal state. Lisa and Ron, being the quiet couple, were so repulsed at what was going on, they launched a ferocious... The chief superintendent had not followed up numerous reports that the clinic may be the reason for these tragic events. Summing up, Judge Macbeth said, Many minds and lives would have been saved if the police and the Ministry for Health had responded to reports. Judge Henry Macbeth, now one of the most highly respected judges in the country, had grown up in the block years earlier. Then a timid teenage girl. Then suddenly, without warning, just before going to law school, she announced her mind was now that of a man and was about to have a sex change operation. Take a piece of paper, fold it in two, tap it on the nearest wall. It's amazing what sounds come through. As a child, I created many sounds and invented little plays involving all my neighbours helped to fill my days. By folding the paper this way and that came the click of high heels from the next door flat. A man in carpet slippers walking down the street or a little child running with pumps on her feet. A man clomping round in his big noisy boots coming home from his work and not caring two hoots for his long day was over and he needed a rest. He sat down by the fire in his tatty string vest. This was all in my head. Everyone played their role. It was almost as if I saw into each soul. If I squinched up the paper, here's what I got. The crackling of logs on a fire flaming hot. I'd mimic the voice of each neighbour in turn. And sometimes I'd call different ones fit to burn. In my own little world, I was queen of the castle. I could find made-up friends who would cause me no hassle. Dear reader, this poem must cause no alarm. It's a child's silly story and has done me no harm. Once in a while, a pane of glass comes falling down from heaven. A sight best viewed at night and the moon's beam is silver. And the spinning glass throws pictures out, projects them on the sky. The sky, the sky. And then they say, Mrs. Monaghan, it's got to be cremated. Oh. Everybody gets cremated these days. But I stood firm, I said no. I mean, Lena, my John, you couldn't even stand the electric blanket. 
Oh, no. Terrible. Oh, it's a terrible loss to me. Even now, we used to talk and talk and talk and talk. Oh, I know you did, Mary. About everything. Every subject under the sun. Ah, oh, you must miss him, girl. Oh, I do. If only Evan had a phone. Oh, I tell you what, still another hundred and eight to go. You know, ready for a few more flights, eh, Mary? <coughs> I'm a bit parched, to be honest. Oh. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. What's all this, then? Is that blue num? Hey, only the best, not every day. Your youngest daughter's 21. Ooh, 2003. Yeah, it's a vintage year, too. Yeah, must have sent you back a bit. No, it was on offer. 200 quid a bottle. It's a bargain. Mm, Challenge. <laughs> uh, do you want a hand with these bags, ladies? Oh, would you, Bill? Oh, oh is that a drop of more <laughs> you got there? Oh, well, it's just it's the joint, you know. <laughs> Keep me limber. <laughs> Oh. Come on, then. Oh. Hey. This is a bit like the Wizard of Oz, this. <laughs> hey, yeah. Sponsored by Liquor Safe. <laughs> Do yourself a favour. Be a Liquor Saver. I'm lying in bed with a drink in my hand, with an ache in my head like a tight steel band. I'm wondering what dream awaits me tonight. Will it be pleasant? Or will I have to fight the demons that follow me around through the day? I really don't know. It's not easy to say. What triggers is a mystery to me. Imaginary colours I'm able to see. I put down my glass and close my eyes. I'm drifting away into hell or paradise. Sleep is my enemy or my friend. My mind's in a whirl. And I try to pretend that I don't really care if the dream's good or bad. In the morning, I'll wake up feeling happy or Sad. Here we go. I'm delighted. For I've just become that cute little girl giving cheek to my mum. She's smiling at me and saying that I'm still just the same as I was in her time. I'm waking for once with joy in my heart. I've decided I'm going to make a fresh start and leave these troublesome dreams far behind. But I'm sure they're all locked away in my mind. This, this is, is the cat that they ate the rat, rat that they ate the spider, spider that lived in the house that, that Jack had built. The last vehicles were leaving the compound. Everything was prepared. The explosives were in place, and tomorrow would be the last day of the super block. Sixty years and a million stories after this monumental edifice to man's vanity had been dreamt of in the leafy suburbs of Puritania, the decision to demolish had been taken. The politicos and civil authorities had done an excellent job in keeping the true problems created by this building out of the media spotlight. The poor and hungry masses that had made Superblock their home had felt safe, secure, 
and cocooned from an increasingly chaotic world, every race, creed and nationality had been present in Thatcher Heights. The Heights had become, in microcosm, a metaphor for the whole world. A totally free economy had evolved in the Heights. Indeed, a whole new ecosystem had grown into every nook and cranny of a structure that would eventually become known as evil. Whole floors had been taken over by snake farmers. Snake meat was a real delicacy, and there was a thriving market in the takeaway curry industry. Other floors had been privatized by bootleg tobacco growers. In 2023, tobacco had been made totally illegal. If ever there was a gangster charter, the Prohibition of Tobacco Act 2023 was it. The growers would stop at nothing to protect their business. Staircases had been smashed down. Lift cables and motors had been vandalized. The upper 90% of Thatcher Heights had been effectively lost to civilization. But as long as problems were kept in-house, the powers that be were prepared to turn a blind eye. Out of sight and out of mind. The snake farmers, rat breeders, tobacco bootleggers at all had something in common. They were all using a genetically modified hormone to increase the size of their yields. They were also using the drains to wash away the waste, affluence and detritus from their entrepreneurial excesses. Who cared? Out of sight and out of mind. One thing was sure, the cockroaches and beetles that lived in the drains had never had it so good. The fungus that had developed in the veins and arteries of this tower block from hell was rich in GM proteins. And how the bugs loved it, and how the spiders thrived on the fat roaches that thrived on the fungus. How, why, and when the mutation had taken place, nobody knew, but taken place it had. The change had obviously occurred over a number of years before becoming an overnight sensation, but when it bit, it bit that things would never be the same again. All the creatures that had inhabited Thatcher Heights had become filled with an uncontrollable appetite for human blood. This is the dog that ate the cat, that ate the rat, that ate the spider, that lived in the house that Jack built. Ryan. Even I didn't expect a guild shock trooper. We have a serious problem, but a shock trooper. I understand that 99% of the block has been swept and is now clean. That's right. There's 33 floors at the top level left to check. And believe me, the 33 degrees of hell. We've lost hundreds of men in this campaign. But a campaign is what it's become. This building's infested with creatures from hell itself. Spiders, snakes, rodents, and even giant leeches that live in the water pipes. We found dozens of bodies in bathrooms, totally sucked dry of blood. Just bags of skin and bone lying where they fell. So tell me, O'Brien, why do our masters in the guild think that you, one man alone, can do what hundreds of our best officers could not? You already know that I'm a guild stormtrooper. But what you don't know is that all modern stormtroopers are only partly human. We are scientifically modified humans with only one purpose, and that is to carry out missions deemed too dangerous for ordinary humans. We have no notion of fear. Our genetic codes have been spliced with other genetic information. For example, my own DNA contains spider DNA, making jungle warfare as easy as walking. We can fight for weeks without provisions. We survive in order to destroy. This is a modified plasma gun, a combination of sonar and laser technology that directly links up with my human chai force when fitted to the body. It can deliver over 23,000 pulses of plasma before I need to be recharged. And it only takes one pulse to kill any living thing. <laughs> well, you're going to eat them all. Because once you're in the block, you're on your own. We'll seal the entrance to the top 33 floors. And your only hope is to make it up to the roof, which was sealed off by bootleggers years ago. Can't even land a chopper there. I will drop a jetpack off later. It'll be your best option. You must try for the roof. One thing I can't figure out, though, is why the guild wouldn't just let us gas this last 33 levels of filth. Because I tell you, 
It's like a Hieronymus Bosch vision of a living hell up there. A true 21st century Gothic. I mean, what the hell is your actual mission, O'Brien? You know I can't divulge guilt secrets. And if I did, then I would have to terminate you. So please, don't ask again. Okay, well, if that's the way it is, I won't ask again. But remember, that if you can stand any chance at all in succeeding in your mission, you'll need my help. You've got life sensors scanning the building. You can warn you of any impending danger. We haven't got time for all of this. I must change into battle dress immediately and start this mission once and for all. You will then take me to the first level of this 33 degrees of hell that you describe, and then let the fun begin. You know that you're entering a real-life game of snakes and ladders. There's only one price you pay for failure, death. This is a, a house of games, a tower of babble dreamt up by Beelzebub in his worst dreams. A real-life game of snakes and ladders. I can only wish you luck, O'Brien. Guild stormtroopers do not rely on luck, my friend. Only technique and technology. Watch this, my friend. Only technique and technology can really save us now, Crowley. <laughs> and what about faith? Doesn't that factor into your equation of life, O'Brien? Or is that part of humanity means subsumed by technique and technology? The very technologies and techniques that have brought mankind to this present state of affairs. Or do you say you just have faith in them? I'm only here to follow orders, Crowley. I'm a guild shock trooper and cannot afford that luxury that you call a conscience. We serve and die, and that's all, that's all there is. Faith is for the second wave humanity, not third wave. And all the lessons of history point to the obvious conclusion that only the strong survive and the weak will go to the wall. Oh, well, let the devil take the iron most, I suppose. There you go again. The devil. Another second wave concept. We will always need movers and shakers in this world, old boy. But to what end are we heading? Well, the beginning of somebody's end is on the other side of that door, and I must go. I will be listening for the warnings on the ear monitor. That's it. You've come from the Guild Ministry of Ecology. You're here to collect DNA samples to take back with you, to keep in your laboratories for future military applications. Don't push your luck, Crowley. I've already told you that I would have to terminate your contract. I, I know. Only the strong survive. That's right. Only the strong survive. The final desert to the block of Fungi and I. The fact that it's a tribe of the Pharisees and the Tali to this battle is totally certain. A great crowd was gathered in the state churches for the fallout. Two people decided to make a picnic of the equation. Most of those binoculars and dark rumors about his demolition of the block had been already so hastily. Local webcast agency, Tenant Space, have been asked to make a documentary of the final hour of the super block, and have both encountered train and engine on their quarry. Most people were hoping it would rain that day and keep the dust to a minimum. The oldest resident of the area had been chosen to push the button to ensure the destruction of the tower block in hell. The rain clouds started gathering a couple of hours before the appointed hour in the dark. And right on cue, ten minutes before the implosion, they erupted into fury. Thunder lightning ripped the sky. A shiver went through the crowd. A siren sounded, and a series of explosions rumbled through the block. Like a boxer who had just been tagged by Chen, it crumpled in on itself. It dropped to its knees, and finally collapsed into a heap on the ground. A cloud of dust sprayed out as the rain lashing in cleared the air almost in instantaneously. Everybody gasped. And where there was once a huge building, there was nothing. Everybody cheered and congratulated themselves on the job well done, and the champagne was uncorked. At this point, the tenants of Encanda started picking up some movements amongst the rubble. The whole occasion was being streamed onto the World Wide Web, and nobody could have predicted what happened next. The people with cameras and binoculars started panicking and running away from the scene, and pouring out of the rubble millions of huge spiders strangely mutated by the genetically modified diet they lived on. The faces of the blood-sucking giant of that place, like the face of Nosferatu, twisted and angry, clearly visible. They swarmed out of the rubble and ran at the watching crowds. The cameras followed the action. The spiders caught up with the old and infirm at first, and then anybody who stood in their way. Mass hysteria set in. The population of the entire planet finally signed over to the World Wide Web.
Uh, welcome to Intershill's section of Writing on the Wall Digital Day. Uh, before we begin, just a few house rules. Uh, anybody with mobiles, please switch them off. Uh, in case of emergency, there's a fire exit just here on my left. Um, the following video is a 22 minute long. People are free to come and go at any point during this, but please try not to disturb anybody too much. The sound quality on some parts of the film is not great, but we hope it is understandable. The piece is entitled Up in the Air and is a debate about issues concerning young people from the Speak and Garston area, including homophobia, asylum seekers and drug legislation. This video has been produced by Young People from Interchill, a young people's internet drop-in centre in Garston which offers informal access to the internet and informal education. The project was established and is managed by young people themselves. It offers a wide range of activities. The young people in the film, in the video, are from Archery Generation, AIR. It is a project in Speak. Part of their work is a creative skills course for those not in employment, training or education. The course includes drama, visual arts, creative technology, communication, digital photography and moving images. During the video on this wall, we will, there will be a looped animation offering some facts and statistics in relation to the subject under discussion. Out at Speak, we have some more young people. They are viewing over the internet in a chat room and they will be answering questions from our audience here after the film. Thank you. the young people were split into teams and asked to come up with arguments for and against certain subjects. Their views may or may not be their own, but they are frank, honest and open. Welcome to our debate. We would like to welcome you all here today, Roy, Chris, Mark, Lisa, Claire and Gareth. I would like to begin by asking Gareth's team to tell us why you feel drugs should be legalised. So say, say, say you're stoned, you'd have a split when you go out and you get mowed down by a car. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. What if the driver stoned? That's why he's in you. Yeah, but if it was legalised, it'd be there. No, it'd be the same as a party one. You're only allowed to sit and mow it. Oh, you're going to listen now. They all do drinking as well, don't they? Even if not legal, people are going to do it, aren't they? So what about people that aren't sick, so to speak? What about the violence? Cause? <coughs> what's the, what about the violence that comes with drugs? Mm. What do you think, what do you think would be good about legalising it for, for like, for oh, like, 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 like,
That's why all the English people are moving abroad. That's, That's why right. I said the English have been going abroad for hundreds and hundreds of years. They got on their ships and sailed the oceans. Yeah, went to Africa, robbed Africa, everywhere. took over Africa, stole all their stuff, and then sailed back here and got it all set up here. The English have always gone abroad here, isn't it? Because there's more people here. It's because we're a little island and we haven't got that much. Yeah. So we need to go and rob everybody else. And what, but back to what percentage of the... You're saying you feel... Are you feeling overrun by asylum seekers? Yeah, because we're having a gun Yeah. Okay. Any corner, any corner. Yeah. So, so there's loads and loads of asylum seekers in speak, is there? Speak. Is it full of them? Yeah. It's yeah. speak. Not that many, but... Okay, where is the many, then? What about in the group? city, Liverpool. Yeah, just speak there's, there's some in the sea that own that shop there. Now, do they bother anyone? Right, then. They there's drive their little van round, the do what they do. Okay. The more than there. Okay, so if you think from well, one... Obviously, there must be a couple. But one or maybe two families. Yeah. Exactly. I, so that gives you a feeling that you've been overrun by them? No, one, one being there, you're all being there. Do any of your families go a bit further back in your family kind of history? Do any of your families come from other countries? Australia. Australia. Trinidad. 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 Okay. So if they were to come back. Okay, so our, <laughs> our quite a small group, really. We are family all If we didn't allow other people into this country, there'd be one person in this discussion, I think. Because the rest of them, well, maybe two, sorry. Yeah. But the, the rest of you are all as a result of this city or this country letting in other people to this country. So going back in time, whoever it is in your family history who came over, do you think they experienced the kind of stuff you're saying about people coming over now? Yes. Do you think whenever in your family somebody came from Trinidad, people were saying the same thing to that person as you're saying about yeah. people? Conversation now turns to the issue of uh, homosexuality and homophobia, and uh, I'm going to call on Ron and Gary Scoop to uh, just explain to us really why, how you feel about homosexuality, and um, what your arguments are for being against homosexuality. At this debate, like half past in the morning, three hours is not really got me one party in. Maybe I've got another party. Yeah, but how are you going to cut them off, off another fella if you're not? What if the guy you should be food for it? No, I mean he's gay and he's close with a woman. Say that woman needs some time. Well, that's why you had a job. You had a little bit of fun. But you can catch age off. Kissing, kissing. Heterosexuals. Uh, for a man or a woman, or a woman that they're mad, it's not just off gay, it's gay parents. What happens if you say kids that have gay parents? I'm not. And the kids are both gay parents. I know. But kids get bullied. Kids get bullied. Kids get bullied. Kids get bullied for everything. Kids get bullied for everything. So what you're saying is that two lesbians have a kid, they adopt a kid. So what you're saying? And then that kid will get victimised because the mum and the mum. Yeah, but maybe they won't do it in front of the kids because they'll just be like, mate, don't so want to you, so you think, 
If both parents were male, or, or most, both parents were female, yeah? so if there were lesbian couple and a gay couple, is there more chance that that kid would grow up to be yeah. gay? Yes, there is yeah. more chance. But what's so wrong given with that most people are brought up by a man and a wife, yet lots and lots of the population are gay, then <coughs> that doesn't work. No, but what, what you're saying is, if your parents are <coughs> like, if you have two lesbian <coughs> parents or two gay men parents, you're more likely to be gay, but it can't work like that. Because most of us have straight parents. And some of us are being gay. Not yet. There would be no... Then there'd be more of a chance. Why do you think there'd be more of a chance? Because you'd be seeing it. Well, you you what would you be seeing? Yeah. What would you be seeing? Two people who love each other being together? Yeah, but it would be my mum. No, I'm not saying it would be man woman. Yeah, but to normal people, I'm just saying. What, what's it, normal? It's not natural. People that aren't gay, you mean? Uh, no, no what's one's not normal. Natu what's yeah, natural? No. So no just tell me what natural is. No, 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 no. People, that's not gay. That's got normal parents. What are normal parents? Normal man. Okay, okay. No. how many families nowadays have that? Oh, oh. Not many. Not many, okay. So, so it's not natural, whatever natural. But lots of things aren't, do you see what I'm saying? Lots of things aren't natural. Yeah, the, no, the, the notion that there's mum and dad at all is not what most of us growing up with now. That's been for quite a long time. What if you had a brother was gay, or, or when, you're older, when you're older and you had your own children and they turned out to be gay, how would that make you feel? I'd be gutted, but... And you'd feel good, obviously. Yeah, but you know, like... Well, why just... Well, they're my son was gay. I'll stop him being gay. Why would I stop him being gay? You can't stop him being gay. You can't stop someone from being in the woods. You can't stop him loving who he wants to love. If you were my father and you had that attitude, I would never, ever, ever split him. But if you would, because he would. And that's what gave us a nice thing. Like you can tell like dead family. Like yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Because I know I'm with you, but it's not gay. You'd be surprised how many yeah. people are gay yeah. and you don't know it. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Some people are yeah. gay. Yeah. Could be any. You would be gay. I love gay. I love gay. I love gay. You just put the front one for us. I love gay. The reason, the reason you're saying that if your son or whatever brother they were gay, it would really upset you and you would not go out over. That's just because society says it's wrong. But if it was all right to be gay, you wouldn't really mind, would you? So if it was okay to be gay, if they were getting drunk, <coughs> if it wasn't was such a taboo. No, I'm just saying, if my son was gay, I'll come to the house. I'll box myself. I'll box myself. I don't think it would. I absolutely do. Now, I understand that you believe that now. It's I saw it at the time you... Do you know people who've done that? <laughs> Young lads. Who've done that to lads who've come out. Do you know who the highest suicide rate amongst young people is? Young gay men. And that's one reason. Well, that's one reason why. I'm not going to go with you, but if I was growing up and I thought I fancied other men, and I thought I was going to be killed or I was going to get a little sick. Yeah, I wouldn't stop it. How, how can I stop it? It's just something that yeah, you, you, you it's know. like you being attracted to Liverpool or Everton football club. Yeah? It, it is, it's just, that's how it happens and it so happens. It yeah. so happens that that's I fancy men. Everton is. But, if I, but if I fancied men, so just because other people don't, wouldn't make me gay. It is what, surely how you no, feel is how you feel. It's like you falling in love with girls, right? It's like you fall in love with a girl, someone saying to you, e -m -m. and you wouldn't stop loving her. Could you love that? Would you? Or no. would you change because what other people no. would say? Yeah, that's what he's like. Or would you have to your own mind? Know. So you wouldn't have to spend your own mind on anything. If like, you go, I like that, you go and someone else goes, oh, that's <coughs> about me, God. Like you go anything. through life listening to other people, you're going to have no life. Because you're just going to do it by other people.
Hello. Uh, just before we go on here, um, the young people were split into two teams and asked they come up with uh, arguments for and against the topics of the debate. Therefore, the views expressed may or may not be their own, uh, but uh, they're frank and honest. Um, just want to explain that uh, we will remain seated for five minutes and there are uh, direct questions to the camera for those who are sitting out in Garston. Um, due to a time delay, there will be a slight gap, so see, keep talking. Thank you. Legalized. Has your opinion changed about drugs being legalized? How do you feel about the asylum seekers in Liverpool now after this debate? Since our debate, do you think a bit more about people who were being homophobic?
bit of a Yeah. 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 Yeah.